is to bubble up from the underground. It looks as if it originated from the 1960s, but the sound is more modern, created on the latest electronic equipment. Psychedelic trance originated at parties on the beaches of Goa in India, and now it seems to have spread all over the world. Its musical roots go back to rock and acid house, but basically it's music to dance to, to party to, to entrance. Nicholas Glass reports now on an underground music that's rapidly growing, as they say, overground. The visual debt is 1960s psychedelia, but whatever people want to call it, psychedelic or goa, trance has its own distinct identity. And on the global musical grapevine, this electronic dance music is proving infectious. Like a virus, you know, it just goes out to a few people and suddenly it spreads everywhere and... You know, you're getting people you've never met coming up to you and saying, oh, I've heard, it. I've been following you, it's, love the music. Promoters in Europe are now, you know, where <coughs> six months ago they were doing house parties, they're now doing, they're doing parties around this music. They don't, and a lot of them don't understand the music, they just see that there is actually something here that they cannot ignore. And when you hear it, it makes you smile, it makes you feel good, and it makes you want to dance. And all of those things are natural things, and suddenly you find yourself wobbling like a jelly on the plate, and you're away. Mars needs women. Electronic dance music has been played in the clubs and at outdoor raves since the 1980s. Essentially, trance is just one room in a multi-roomed house of rave music. But despite the repetitive beat, there are subtle differences. There's more melody, eastern scales and rhythms are used, and there are traceable hippie origins, the beach parties in Goa in southwest India. More than ever, underground music spreads internationally. France has travelled with the party goers and the DJs from Goa to Brazil, Australia, Israel and Europe. And in the last few months, the music and style magazines here have begun to take note. There have been trance nights in clubs in London, Birmingham and Manchester, as well as underground parties elsewhere. In this London nightclub, they spent hours dressing the set with fluorescent colours, creating, they hoped, the right kind of mystical ambience for their trance dance. The organisers of this event call themselves Return to the Source, any source, it seems, Eastern and Western philosophies. You name it, and the symbols are here, Indian, Maori, Aboriginal, American Indian, the tribal fused with the electronic. Up went a teepee behind the mixing desk. And a tube heading for the wings turned out to be part of a totem pole. The ritual of preparing the dance floor was almost religious. And they say they actively discourage the sort of drug taking long associated with the dance scene. We create sort of a sacred space, if you like, like a modern day temple. We're offering a, a sort of a, a safe, fun place for people to come and enjoy sort of the ritual, if you like, of dancing together. And I've been sort of making a point of talking to the young people who come to the club. And they've come, actually come up to me and said, well, Chris, listen, for the first time I haven't taken any drugs tonight. I used to take five ecstasies, four ecstasies a night, and now actually I'm not taking any, and I found that I'm having the same level, the same experience, the same, okay, it's not the same experience, but they're having a euphoria, and they're finding out that they can actually, you know, sustain a level of stamina the whole night, because of the energy of the club is so positive. But do you think that's many people or just a few? Well, I, you know, I think it starts with a few, doesn't it? On a Friday night, there was a queue outside the club, Mostly people had come because they'd heard about the music, heard that these nights had a good feel about them. No one mentioned mysticism or spirituality. I've heard the gig, Return to the Source, is very, very good. I've not been to one and I've had some good, um, good reports about it. A lot of friends of mine have had a really good time. Everybody's really friendly. No hassle, no aggro. Everybody's had a really good party, you know? I heard it. The music was God trance. That's why I came. It's a bit more boingy boingy, it's like more relaxed. It's a bit more what? Boingy boingy. <laughs> what does that mean? 
What's pointy pointy mean? Pointy pointy, you're like you're, you're really bouncy and you just feel really full of energy and like people, you just like really relaxed and the music just takes control of your body. If anything goes tonight, like it's all on a like, peaceful kind of vibe though. I mean, I'm getting each other in there. Very rare. How long will you stay? Till it finishes. Till it finishes usually. Till <laughs> so, well. I drop dead on the floor <laughs> in the heat. Till well, six in the morning. Six yeah. in the morning. Once inside, everything is aimed at making this a different kind of evening, a trance night out. Away from the dance floor, there are rooms where you can talk and drink Indian tea. And if you want to, you can also wander around the market. Trance is cheaply produced music, which is beginning to have commercial potential. Down at Butterfly Studios in Brixton in South London, they've been experimenting with trance music for some years. The studios are owned and run by the bass guitarist with the band Killing Joke, who's known simply as Youth. Long involved in the underground and dance scene, he's a child of the 60s. I think it's inevitably going to go beyond underground, as what happened with the beat poets of Ginsberg and the, the architects of the 60s, psychedelic... Uh, revolution when that went overground that was a fantastic thing and that changed the world in a very big way and I'd, I'd, I'd very much like to see this have a similar effect in a contemporary uh, way do you think it will I don't know I don't know what I don't know maybe maybe I mean I'm certainly um, trying to promote uh, the music and the that that vibe if you like um, to as many people as possible and turn them on to that. There are only a handful of small British record labels putting out trance music. Names like Tip, Dragonfly and Flying Rhino. Although some of the big record companies are beginning to sniff around. Dominic and I play, we DJ, and uh, every time we play there's always a handful of people who've never heard this music before. They might be into other forms of dance music or whatever, but they always appear and, and go, what the hell was that? That was absolutely outrageous. In the last three months or so, trance music has moved beyond the specialist record shops to the high street. A couple of Radio 1 DJs have started to play it, and indeed one of them is producing a Goa trance album. At 23, Simon Posford is the first artist to make a psychedelic trance album on his own. He makes his music, like many trance musicians, in his studio at home. Even when I made the album, I never set out to make an album. I was just going to parties and made these tunes, you know, there's nothing like hearing your tune on a dawn, you know, a beautiful dawn and you know, at an outside party, everyone cheering and, you know, it's an amazing feeling. There's somehow an innocence about trance and a wariness of media interest. For those who like it, each piece is a musical journey. Up to now, trance has been underground, just one segment of the dance music orange. It now seems destined for wider consumption.